Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Stardog webinar. I'm Ingrid Ramos, and I am a Director of Marketing here at Stardog. It's my pleasure to introduce today Enrique Sores. He is a Senior Product Manager at Stardog. And Enrique is going to walk us through Stardog Cloud. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Enrique. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, as Ingrid said, I'm Enrique, I'm a product manager here at Stardog, and I primarily focus on the UX of Stardog Cloud, so any feedback is going to be uh, very welcome here on my side. And today we're going to talk about how to make knowledge graphs easy with Stardog Cloud, and it's going to be a step-by-step -step guide, it's going to be very hands-on, we're going to go straight to our product, but before doing that, Ingrid, can you please uh, yeah, I was going to ask for our poll here. So we want to know how familiar you are with knowledge graphs. So not very familiar, somewhat familiar, very familiar or an expert. And we're going to get to those results in a minute to see how that goes. Today, we're going to cover an introduction to knowledge graphs and start our cloud and then our demo. First of all, how to create a knowledge graphs in four no code steps. And then we're going to learn how to visually browse and query your knowledge graph. At the end of our webinar, we're also going to cover some extra resources to make the most of Startup Cloud, including our new LLM powered tool. And by the end of our webinar, we're going to run a Q&A session. So please make sure to send your questions here using our Q&A tool in Zoom. Ingrid, do you have the results yet? Great. So 30% uh, of, our, of our audience is not very familiar with knowledge graphs and 44 is somewhat familiar. So we don't have a lot of experts today. So this is good because we're going to start with the basics. But if you are an expert or very familiar, uh, please stick around. We're going to cover some other things at the end of our demo. Let's get started here with an introduction to knowledge graphs for those of you who are not familiar. A knowledge graph is a flexible semantic data layer that unifies and provides meaning to your data silos. So what does it mean? Usually most of our companies here start with some data silos with different data management systems or business unit applications. And it's kind of hard to maintain those da this data and also to connect them. So Startdog acts as here as a flexible semantic data layer that provides meaning to all this data and connects them. So this way you can use them in your apps to run AI tools or with your BI tools, such as Power BI or Tableau. And the best part here is that you can have more than one model with the same data silos that you usually have. And this model can evolve as your data evolves. So different departments can access this data with different models that are going to be better for their use case. And also uh, by doing that, by doing that, by having this flexible semantic data layer unifying your data, you're going to answer complex queries and uncover hidden patterns better and faster. And now let's talk about Startup Cloud. Startup Cloud is a complete enterprise knowledge graph platform. So this is the way for you to build and query your knowledge graphs as a managed service. And in Stardog Cloud, you're gonna have access to all Stardog applications, Stardog Designer, Explore, Stardog Explorer, and Stardog Studio. And I'm gonna talk about them in a while. You're also going to have access to our demos and tutorials. They are, we call them knowledge kits that are going to help you at all levels of expertise. Here is an example. So this is a healthcare demo. You can, with one click, go straight to it and understand the basics of knowledge graphs. And also we have several learning resources, such as a dedicated community, checklists, guides, and more. So here is an example. You can just click here and find our tours. For example, if you want to learn Sparkle, our documentation, and other guides that I'm going to go through today. And now it's demo time. And for our demo, we're going to have here a use case for customer 360 with a very common business challenge, connecting data silos, as we were talking before. As an exercise, we have to understand what is the state of the customer who bought product 43. 
So let's say that you want to provide support for this customer, but you need to understand what is his state. The problem here with data silos is that the state, this information is on our first database, which is for locations. And the, 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 the product 43 purchase is on a second database called purchases. And these databases are not connected. So how can I understand what is the state of the customer if I don't have this information on the purchases and vice versa? Well, luckily we have a third database called customers that can connect these two databases. And that's what we're going to do today during our exercise. To make things easier, I'm going to use a CSV file for each database. So it's not the actual database, but you don't have to download them every time. You can virtualize them in Startup Cloud. Uh, and here's an example. So the purchases file, this one has the product ID. So I need to understand which, which is the purchase ID for the product ID 43. And here is the second database location, which has the field state. As you can see, we don't have any fields here in both locations and purchases, but as I've mentioned, we do have in customers location ID, which connects to the locations database. And we also have customer ID, which relates to the purchases database. So we're going to use the customer's database to find out which is the state of the customer who bought product ID 43. And to do that, we're going to create a knowledge graph using Stardog. Here is the URL, stardog.com slash get started. And here I'm going to create my account with our free learning environment. So I'll just click here in start free now and sign up with my Google account. Accept the, our cookies. And then I'm just going to create my profile. I am familiar with knowledge graphs, Stardog, training session. and then access Stardog. And the first thing that I want to do here for this demo is to create a knowledge graph. Uh, so I'm going to create a new knowledge graph endpoint. Uh, as you can see, we offer a free learning environment. So I'm just going to click here and agree to the Stardog terms of service and check out our free environment. While Stardog is building our knowledge graph endpoint, I'm going to take a look at our chat. Could you define semantic in this context? So we call it a semantic data layer because you can actually write down uh, an expression. So in your database, you're gonna have your data and here you're gonna have a metadata. So you're going to explain the relationships between your data. Uh, so here we go. I already have my Stardog free environment and we're going to use Stardog Designer to build our knowledge graph. As you can see, we have several guides here and today we're going to learn with dummy data. So when you create your account in Stardog Cloud, you'll be able to follow the exact, the exact steps that I'm going to follow here. So I'm going to learn with dummy data and as, as, an, as an exercise, we will create a knowledge graph for a fictional company that uses three separate CSV files. So these are the files I was talking about before. So I'm going to download them here. Here we go. I already have the files now. And I'm going to click on Next to get started. You can see here that the checklist Create a Knowledge Graph is going to help you throughout this process. So you don't have to follow them right now you can see our recorded version of this webinar later or follow the steps of the checklist. So the first step that we're going to go through here is to create a project. So I'm going to click on new and name my project, my first project and click on create. And again, we have another guide. So the first thing that designers suggest us to do is to add our project resources that can be a CSV file or a virtual graph to get started. So let's click here on next to see that designer will suggest a class and its attributes based on the project resource. We're going to see that in a while. 
and we can add as many project resources as we want. And if you are using our dummy CSV files, add all of them. So this is what I'm going to do here. I don't have to download them again because I already have them. And I'm just going to click here on plus to add our project resource. And as you can see, you can add a virtual graph to connect to your databases, or you can also upload your file. In this case, I'm going to start by uploading our customer's file. I think you can't see that what I'm doing because it's out of Chrome, but I just uploaded our customer's CSV file, this one. You can see that you'll be able to actually edit anything you want here on this file, but I'm going to create here and map. And here are the mapping suggestions. So designer automatically suggests a primary identifier and the attributes of this class. So I'm going to click on create. And here it is, our first class customers and our first project resource they are already connected. And following the instructions, I'm going to do the same thing for the location CSV file. So I'm clicking on next here and let designer suggest the attributes for this class. So I already have here locations, customers. And now the last one purchases is our last CSV file that I'm going to add here. Once again, the fields from my CSV file are here referred to as attributes of this class. So I'm going to create them. There we go. We have all the information we need here. I'm going to go back to it in a while. If you missed it, don't worry. And now designer tell us what to do next. So the next, the next step is to add a relationship. A relationship is the semantic explanation, so this is what we were talking before in the chat, of the connection between two classes. To edit, select the source class, click on Add Relationship, define the target class, and click on Create. And here we have the instructions for this dummy CSV file. So again, if you're going to follow these instructions later, don't worry, everything is going to be here in app. So for this case, we're going to add the relationship made purchase between the classes customer and purchase, and the relationship lives in between customer and location. And I'm going to explain this again. Here is the, the instruction that we were reading before. So I can dra drag and drop in my canvas at any time. Just a quick recap. We now have three classes here, locations, customers, and purchases and they are all connected to the initial project resource. And now designer is telling me to create the semantic explanation. That means the relationship between all these classes. So the first one is the relationship made purchase between customer and purchase. So to provide meaning to this data that we have here, I'm going to create an add relationship after clicking on customers. Made purchases, the source of this relationship is customer, and the target here is purchases. So we now know that customers made purchases and the, to the class purchases. And we're going to do the same thing here with lives in between customers and location. So I'm going to click on customers, add relationship, lives in, and location. So customers, what's the semantic explanation? We know that customers lives in locations. You can always go back to the GIF here by clicking on show GIF and then minimize it here. And you can reopen the instructions by clicking here on the checklist. So if you missed it, you can just go back to see it again. So now our model has the classes, the three classes, two relationships, and the classes already are already connected to the project resources. In this case, our CSV files. We're now going to map the relationships. And you can click here to understand what that means. So before publishing our model, we have to map a project resource for each relationship to connect its source and target classes. And I'm going to show how to do that in a while. To do that, select the mapping of the desired project resource toggle to the mapping view and set the source slash target class and add its primary identifier. 
I'm going to go through all of this to make it clearer. But as you can see, when I minimize, I can keep the information here so I can take a look at it uh, while I do that. So first of all, we need to select the map in purchases, purchases. So this one and toggle to the map, map in view. So I'm going to map this relationship, this project resource to this relationship. Remember that we were saying before that purchases and customers, we can connect them here with the customer ID. So customer ID actually connects the files, customers and purchases. And by mapping the relationships is how we're going to indicate that to designer. So I'm going to click on purchases, purchases, toggle to the mapping view, and then set the source class here, source class for the relationship made purchase. I'm going to select customers and the source primary identifier that we have here is customer ID. So this is the field that we want to use to connect them. So as you can see, we are now connecting our project resource to both the class purchases and the class customers. So we can now query them at the same time. And now we have to do the same thing to connect locations and customers. To do that, switch back to the model view and do the same with customers, customers. So I'm going to create here, customers, customers, and go to the mapping view. And in lives in, so this is the relationship that I want to map, I'm going to select locations and use the primary identifier location ID. Again, if you missed the explanation, don't worry. You can always go back to the checklist. You can always click it here to see the explanation. You're, you're gonna have GIFs, you're gonna have other resources in app to understand how to follow through. So there we go. Now this basic model is all mapped. We have all classes, we have all project resources, and the project resources are mapped to both the classes and the relationships. So purchases is connecting purchases and customers, and customers is connecting customers and locations. The final step here is to publish and browse your data. So this is the power of Startup Cloud. We're going to publish our model and we will be able to use that right away. So to do that, just click on publish and follow the steps. And then we're going to switch to Stardog Explorer, where we're going to query our knowledge graph. So let's click here on publish to get started. We're going to create a database for this exercise. So I'm gonna call it database. You're gonna find several other options here that you can take a look later. And I'm going to create a new model. So I'm starting this knowledge graph. So I'm just going to click on next here. And designer is going to upload these files for customers, locations, and purchases. You're gonna see different options when you are iterating your model, but since I'm creating a new one, I'm just going to click on publish. There you go, my project is already published instantly. So now, as I have created our project here using designer, I'm going to switch to Stardog Explorer, which is an intuitive interface to visually browse and query your knowledge graph. So in Designer, we created our knowledge graph in four no-code steps, and now we're going to query it using Explorer. Here we go. I'm going to select my database here. And you can click here on Visualize. This is our model. So we have customers connected to locations, and we have customers connected to purchases and you can visually query this knowledge graph. So I'm going to click here on Query Builder and create my query without any code. So I want to know the location of the customer who bought product 43. Just as a reminder, this was our, our exercise. So I'm going to click here on locations. The connection that I'm looking for is lives in, related to the customer. And we want to know which customer made the purchase for product ID 43. So here is my query. 
location lives in customer. So I'm in customer made purchase purchases. So I'm connecting purchases and locations, even though they don't have any fields in their CSV files, but they are both connected to customers. And the filter that we are applying here is that the purchase was for the product ID 43. So now I'm going to click on run. And there you go. Now we can see that you, you can expand the right click here and click on see details. We can see that the location we are looking for is Dexter. The city is Fargo. The label is Dexter. Uh, the state is North Dakota. So this is the information that we are looking for. We also have street number and zip code, etc. And you also can explore here the customer. So the customer is Celine Bastiman. She speaks German and she lives in Dexter. So this is the relationship that we were talking before. And she has actually made three purchases. So one, this one was for product 43. But as you can see, we can also expand to find out she, that she has two other purchases. And this is the good part about Explorer. You can visually explore this knowledge graph that we have just created without any code. And I'm just going to go back here to designer to show you a final thing. So we were looking for the state. And here, the location, the label, as you can see, is not actually the state. It's promoting as the street name. But you can also customize the label that you are looking for. So here, for example, if I could go back to designer and click on locations and then mapping, I can change the label of this field. So instead of using street name, let's say that I want to use the state. And the same for purchases. Instead of using purchase ID that you can actually, cannot actually see anything there, it doesn't mean much, you can change that to the date, for example. So I want to see the date of the purchases. I've changed this to information here. I'm going to click on publish, select the database that I was using, click on next. And now I want to replace the model. So I just iterated this, this model and I'm going to click here on next, replace the CSV files and publish my project. And then I'm going to go back to Explorer and reload my URL. And as you can see, now our purchases are displayed with the date and the location is actually shown with the state. So here is an, a different visualization of the information that I was looking for. But as always, I can always see the details here and I can always expand any relationship here as I have done before. So let's see the dates of the purchases that this client has done. So we have, we have now the three purchases here and you can expand all of them. Uh, well, in this case, we don't, we don't have any information more here, but you can always expand each information here uh, in your graph without any code. So there we go. We had three different files, customers, purchases, and locations, and we connected all of them using Stardog Cloud. First, we created our model in Designer, and then we queried it in Explorer. But this is just the beginning. Even though the benefits here are great, this is just a basic example of a possible use case, because the more data sources and classes you have, so the more connections you have, the greater improvements you notice in your productivity. And Startup Cloud will always help you get even more value. So here I was talking about a beginner phase uh, on your journey with knowledge graphs, but know that Startup Cloud is going to be always there to support you. And to show that, I'm going to provide here four extra resources for your knowledge graphs. The first one is inference rules. So in Designer, besides creating the model itself, you can also create inference rules without any code. So your knowledge graph. So here is an example. We have three classes, customer, taxes, and vehicle. And th they are not connected. Customers and taxes are not connected, but they are both connected to the vehicle. So by creating an inference rule in, in Designer, you can actually infer the relationship between customers and taxes 
if they are both related to the same vehicle. And that saves a lot of time in your queries. Stardock Cloud also supports virtual graphs. So you can actually access databases from Databricks, MySQL, PostDegree, Snowflake, and many others without copying the data into Stardock Cloud. So here I was using a CSV file as an example, but know that you can actually connect your data to any of these databases without moving this data, copying it, and you're always going to get the most up-to-date results in Explorer. We also have Stardog Studio. I was showing Stardog Designer and Explorer, but we also have a complete IDE created for data engineers to program knowledge graphs with support for Sparkle queries and GraphQL. So this is a more advanced environment, especially for data engineers, but know that you can go even further using Stardog Design uh, Studio. And the final extra resource that I want to share today is Voicebox. This is still in preview mode. We're going to release that later this year, but Voicebox is an LLM powered assistant that will revolutionize the accessibility of knowledge graphs forever. So we have been working on no code tools such as Designer and Explorer to make knowledge, knowledge graphs more accessible, but we, we're going to push that even further with Voicebox. And here is a preview. So we created a basic model in Designer right now class by class, relationship by relationship, but with Voicebox. You can just click here on Voicebox and you can actually use natural language to ask, ask for the model that you're looking for. So in this example, a customer 360 use case as it pertains to improving customer satisfaction. And it's going to return a whole model that you can use. And this is the initial model, but you can also iterate your current model. You can ask for new attributes, new relationships, new classes, you can test it out. And uh, we are so proud of Voicebox. We are pretty sure that this is going to help a lot of our customers to create their knowledge graphs. Voicebox is also going to help our customers to query their knowledge graphs in studio. So keep in touch. And uh, as I said, it's going to be released, released later this year, first for our Startup Cloud users. So if you don't have a Startup Cloud account, Please claim your own uh, learning environment for Startup Cloud, and you'll have access to Voicebox as soon as it gets released. All right, we'll see you all at the next one. Again, uh, look for an email from me and let me know if you have any other questions. Have a great day.